Ready to learn how to complete a pie note? Let's get started. Click on the Notes desktop. You will be presented with the list of notes that you have created. This listing will only display your notes unless you are a supervisor or a super user. If you are a supervisor, all notes that have you listed as the supervisor are displayed. If you are a super user, all notes for the clients in your cost center assignments will be displayed. Use the filters on the left hand side to drill down into the list. Double clicking on the line will take you into that note to review or to edit. To add a brand new note to the system, click Add Note. It may be helpful to maximize the note to full screen. Begin by selecting your client. Your security settings will determine the clients displayed in the drop-down list. You may only see clients that have been assigned to you as opposed to all of the clients your agency serves. You can verify this setting by going to the Options menu to see if the Assigned Clients box is checked. If this box is checked and you do not see the client name for which you need to write a note for, the client will need to be added to your roster under the Employees section. If you are using the system to schedule your services, then you should be creating your notes from the scheduled events. Doing so will ensure that the units flow correctly in the system and can accurately be counted. It is important to understand that your unit count will be very inflated if you have scheduled events that are not pulled into the note. Please be sure to understand how your agency intends to use the schedule with the notes. To create a note from the schedule, move to the Schedule drop-down field. Select the record that matches the service and the date of the note to be created. Once the scheduled record is selected, confirm that all populated fields are correct, editing where necessary. Based on your company settings, you may or may not be able to change any of the fields that pull in from the schedule. If your services are not being scheduled in the program, then skip over the scheduled field and select the service date by clicking on the calendar icon. Next, select the authorized service that was provided. Each service is associated with the end date of the authorization. Selecting the correct service provided is critical so that the corresponding goals for that service are displayed. After selecting the service, notice the Service Unit Utilization Graph. Hover your mouse over the colors in the graph to see the corresponding unit counts. Green will be remaining units, blue is billed, and red will show you in-process units. In-process units could consist of time entered on the schedule or time against an approved note that has not yet been billed. The template field should auto-populate to PyNote based on your service selection. If PyNote is not auto-populated, open the drop-down and select this option. This template will pull in the proper note format for this style of note. Enter in the start time and end time or the duration. It is one or the other based upon the way your company intends to capture time for service. When duration is elected, then start time and end time will be disabled and the duration field will be enabled. When using start time and end time, be sure to include AM and PM. As a tip, just hit A for AM and P for PM. Your name will auto-populate in the caregiver field. There should be no reason to change this as you are the caregiver who is documenting the service. The supervisor name will also auto-populate. You can change the supervisor name if need be when who is auto-populated is not the actual supervisor responsible for reading and approving your note. 
The type of contact drop-down will allow you to note whether the service was provided indirectly to the client or face-to-face -to, -face to the client. The service location field will allow you to document where the service was provided, whether it was in the agency's facility or in the community. Begin documenting the service by either selecting your goal or by typing in your goals in the Purpose of Contact section. It is highly recommended that the goals are entered on the treatment plan so that the goals are synced to the note. The goals are entered in the Client's Desktop in the Treatment section. To learn more about that, please see the video titled Adding Goals to a Treatment Plan for PyNotes. You may select one or more of the goals. You then have sections to document the interventions provided and the effectiveness of those interventions. There is automatic spell check within each one of those areas. These three sections are standard to our PyNote, meaning these are the system defaults. Your agency has some options in customizing this if need be. If, for example, you would prefer to call one or any of the sections a different name, you can provide custom labels. Another option may be to add additional fields if you need to capture more information. The ability to customize the note is managed under the Configure desktop. When you feel you have completed your documentation, your last step will be to sign the note. In order to see the Sign Note button, hit Save. When hitting Sign Note, you will be asked to input your password. This is the same password that you use to log into the program. By entering your password, you are attesting that you are the staff member documenting the service and that you intend to put your electronic signature onto the document. You may receive warning messages if there is anything systematically out of compliance with the note. As in this case, we've been warned that the client has an expired consent as well as the employee certification of attained a four-year degree not completed. The system will check to make sure that the following are in place. The caregiver certifications are up to date and not incomplete or expired. The client's consents are up to date and not incomplete or expired. There are enough units left on the service authorization, that the time on the note does not overlap with another note, and that all required fields have been entered. When any of those things have not been met, you will be provided with this type of warning message. You will have the choice to click Yes, Continue Processing, or No, Cancel. By clicking Yes, you will proceed with signing your note and your supervisor will then review for approval. The supervisor will also receive the same warning message and may determine at that time that the note cannot be approved for billing or for payroll. If you click No, Cancel, the note will not be signed and therefore will not be eligible for the supervisor to approve. Please review with your supervisor how you should handle these warning messages. You may reference your workflow chart to understand the status of your note as it moves through the life cycle of the program. This will help you understand if it has been approved for billing, approved for payroll, and whether or not it's been billed. You will find several tabs within each note. The Tasks tab is used for internal communication between the supervisor and the caregiver of the note. Typically, this is used when the supervisor cannot approve the note and needs to provide the caregiver with the needed corrections. The caregiver can then respond to the task and alert the supervisor when the task has been completed. You can learn more about the workflow of tasks in the Tasks video. The History tab provides an audit trail with a timestamp of all actions taken upon every save. And lastly, the DMS tab stores the electronic record of the note. Every time a note is signed and or unsigned, a new electronic record is created. You can view the note by clicking on the green arrow. This is how your PyNote will look. 
And that completes this video on how to complete a PyNote. Please be sure to watch the related videos in the PyNote series to learn more.